Orland Park Mayor Dan McLaughlin. The following program is brought to you by the Village of Orland Park. and welcome to another edition of Orland Park in Focus. Today we're at the Stellwagen Farm in Orland Park on 179th and 108th Avenues. And with me today I have Betty Stellwagen Maui and Jim Stellwagen and they're going to give us a tour of the farm and tell us a little bit about the restoration and things to come. Thank you for being here with me today. How are you? Fine. I was hoping that you could tell us a little bit about your, um, the Stellwagen Foundation. Well, the foundation was set up when Orland acquired the property in 2002, and uh, both Jim and I serve on that board, and it is an overseeing board um, for activities here at the farm. We're in the process of talking about a walking trail and a restoration of the house. Okay. Wonderful, and that was started when Orland acquired the land as part of the Open Lands Act, correct? Yes, correct. Okay, great. And Jim, could you give us a brief history about the Stellwagen farm? Well, the Stellwagens uh, immigrated from Germany in the 1840s at a farm in Frankfurt Township. And when that was uh, Philip Stellwagen and his oldest son was Matthias, when Matthias became uh, of age and got married in 1860, they bought this farm here in Orland Township. So Matthias farmed this ground, uh, acquired various acreages through his time period, developed the farm. His uh, son, um, John, he farmed at, uh, after Matthias, and then John's son, Ralph, farmed next, and then his son, Harwood, farmed, and then that, Harwood's my father, and then I farmed in, starting in the 80s, 1980s. And so there were five generations of uh, continuous Stellwagen farming here, going back to 1860. Wow, what a wonderful history for our village to learn more about. Well, we're excited to see to, uh, to see the work that you've put into this farm and the restoration that's going on and work that's yet to come. So thanks for having us here today. Our pleasure. I'm standing here beneath the Stellwagen Farm Windmill and Jim's going to tell us a little bit about the history and how it works. Well, 100 years ago there was the original windmill here and it was important to provide the water. The rod goes up and down which pumps the pump, draws the water up. The water goes from here through this building, which um, we'll look at in a minute, but that circulates water in there to keep the dairy milk cold. And then the water would pass through and water the livestock and put it in a tank. So the windmill was no longer functional, probably in the 1930s. They ended up using um, electric pump to pump the water at that point. So in 2007, we thought it would be nice to restore the windmill. So we called the company up and ordered one. They said, well, it's virtually the exact same style that you would have had 100 years ago. We um, ordered one to the best um, idea that we had as far as how tall to have it. And we went to install it, dug the holes, and found the exact same spots where the original was mounted the old anchor bolts were still there and so we just bolted this one onto the old original points. Um, the gentleman installing the windmill said would you like to put a new pump there? We didn't know what was uh, underneath us here mm -hmm. as far as the quality of the the well mm -hmm. so they uncovered it and there was a 40-foot well there hand dug well it's brick lined and there was 20 foot of water in it so we said wouldn't take much to make this functional so we did that. So this project went uh, to 2007. It only takes a few pumps to get the water going. Okay. Now Betty's going to tell us a little bit about the milk house and how it was used in conjunction with the windmill. Yeah, the milk house was uh, the storage spot for the milk. It would cool it down after it was uh, milked from the cows. The cooling system was a device with the water that came from the windmill, um, would run into the tank, 
and fill the tank and that would keep the water the milk cold and then the overflow would run out and would be used to water the cows back in the cow shed. So no wasted water here? No, no. And now we're with Jim in the Stellwagen Farm barn. Jim, tell us a little bit about the barn. Well, this is the main barn. It's very large. Um, it's got uh, the peg construction. It, uh, this building has totally been restored. and The exterior is brand new wood, but interior we've done very little to change things. So up above, there's um, large hay mows on three sides. It uh, can hold up to about 6,000 bales when uh, we would fill it full. Um, down below is the area where the cows would be milked. And in back, there's areas where the more milking could take place or calves could be or heifers. And then on this side is where the horses were kept when the days when they did all the farm work with horses. Right here in the center, the loads of hay would be pulled in to the center part and that's where the hay could be accessed and, and taken up into the mow. And did you have to bring in hay from the fields or from other farms? It was mostly all hay we grew and produced here. All right, very interesting. And next we're going to take a look at the stanchions, did you say, where the cows were? Where the cows would be milked, that's correct. Jim, tell us about how the cows were milked and fed in here. Well, this is a dairy barn that would hold about 18 cows at a time. The cows would enter from the back side of these stanchions, so they would enter from the outside and walk in. Each cow knew which stanchion to go to. They were trained to do that. They would come in and stick their head through the stanchion here, and then the farmer would close this up around their neck, and that would keep the cow in place. So their heads were on this side, and the end for milking was on the other side. Uh, the cows would eat here, they could access water right here, they could stick their snouts in there and replenish with fresh water. And then this is a um, milking machine that was used. We had two of those on the farm and they was, that was taken from cow to cow and each one was milked uh, individually. And then when the bucket was full, that bucket would have to be poured into a pail and then the pail carried into the milk house. All right, Jim, go ahead and tell us about the silo. The silo is a glazed block silo. Each one of these block bases, it's similar to like a concrete block that you might see at the lumber yard or something, but it's stacked. Um, the, the exterior and the interior is glazed so that the um, interior is fairly airtight. And that's important so that the silage when it was in there wouldn't spoil. Silage is basically corn stalks that have been chopped up uh, out in the field, brought in for to the silo, blown in with a special machine to the very top, and it would fill up and fill up with silage. Just again, it's just chopped corn stalks and the corn and the corn cob, every part of the stalk, it's all chopped up. Mm -hmm. And then throughout the winter, um, the farmer would climb up to the top of the silo and shovel out a certain amount of silage, would land right here where we're standing, and then that would get shoveled and put in front of the uh, cows for their feed. And, and that was that's what gave us the food for um, the year until the cows were able to be outside on pasture again in the summer. And it was the corn, the stalk, and everything, not just the kernel. The entire plant. Mm -hmm. Jim, you've given us a nice glimpse of what life might have been like during the Stellwagen farm days. And I know there's still so much more to see. So can you tell us more about what's on the property here? Well, the property is 60 acres. Very briefly, uh, we have a couple of round um, cribs here that were used for ear corn storage. There's a tool shed, a granary or corn crib. There's a pig house, a brooder house, a chicken house, and a coal house, and also is the main house where we lived. Okay, and all of this is undergoing restoration right now. You've um, given some tours, and I know eventually this should all be um, available for public tours. Is that correct? That is the goal. We've done a lot to restore all the exterior buildings. We haven't tackled the house. That's a, a future project here. But all the exterior buildings, the farm buildings, have had all of the exterior redone. So everything you see as far as the siding, the wood siding, which is cypress wood, the roof, the doors, the windows, all the hardware, everything you see exterior is brand new to try to give it another lawn life um, so it'll be here for the next hundred years and the next five generations. So that's the goal.
thank you to Jim Stellwagen and Betty Stellwagen Maui for having us out here today and showing us this wonderful gem of Orland Park. We're looking forward to supporting you in the future restoration of the Stellwagen Farm family home, and I know there's a foundation to support that. Uh, if people are interested in um, supporting the foundation, how could we do that? They could contact the development services at Orland Park and direct it to the Stellwagen Family Farm Foundation. Um, like everything else, it takes funds, so we're working to generate, generate funds. Ultimately, there'll be a walking path here too, but uh, like we say, the exterior buildings are done, but we'd really like to restore the house back to about the 1820s, where we'd go back to the original clapboard siding and open the porches up and uh, give it a, a feel of that era. It looks beautiful, but lots more work to be done. Um, you've given some tours this year and are hoping to do some more next year, correct? We had some wonderful tours this summer. It was a lot of fun to see the people come out and the interest they had and to, to share our experiences in the, the life of farming. So yes, we're definitely hoping to offer more of that next summer. Great, well thank you so much for having us. We're happy to support you and to learn more about the Stellwagen Farm and we look forward to continuing watching your progress with the Stellwagen Farm Restoration and thank you for having us. Thank you, it was our pleasure.